and they took them to town. They said, fuck your neutral site. And they announced to the world that they're on to Burrowhead Stadium. Wait, wait, wait shit, fuck. Oh, cut the kid. Welcome to the Jungle Bengals fans, I'm Kyle Phelps and fuck you, I'm happy. Why? Because despite the Bengals coming up short of the ultimate goal a second year in a row, this was still one of the best seasons I have ever personally witnessed from this team and I've got nothing but excitement about the next 10 years or so. We're going to break down the whole season today, but before we get into that, I'd just like to ask that you like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content. It really helps my channel grow and helps you know when all of my content drops. And we heard it all offseason, right? The Bengals are flukes. They got lucky time and time again in 2021 and made it to the Super Bowl all because of that and the refs and blah, 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 blah. There's virtually no chance they're going to be good again this year. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we heard it all, but I don't think anybody's calling us flukes anymore. Although I will say, the fluke cries, they got louder and possibly a little bit more justified the way they started this season. To be fair though, Joe Burrow had an appendectomy roughly a month before the season started. Considering that normal, you know, non-football related recovery time for an appendectomy can be a four to six week process, frankly, I feel like Burrow should be lauded for having over 300 yards and two passing touchdowns in that first game against the Steelers. The problem is he threw four picks, which, I, which is like the only time he's literally ever done that in his career, by the way. That was really out of character for him, and, you know, the Bengals ended up starting 0-1. Then I think the lack of preparation in the offseason really caught up to them in Week 2, and he threw for under 200 yards in a 20-17 loss to the Cowboys in Week 2. So, the narrative at this time was starting to focus much more on the Bengals as a whole being total flukes. Alright, so now the Bengals are 0-2, and all the metrics say the Bengals' chances of making the playoffs are they're less than 10%. And Joe Burrow said, alright, bet. After warming up the first two weeks, the offense played much better against strong defenses, at the time, in the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. Now they're 2-2, two and, two, and they've completely reversed that 0-2 start. Unfortunately, they went back under 500 for the first time this season after running into an incredible performance by the Ravens defense. Although, I gotta say, I don't think our defense gets enough credit for holding Lamar Jackson to under 174 passing yards and 58 rushing yards in that game. That was the fourth lowest passing and rushing total for him the entire season. Still though, two and three and kind of moving in the wrong direction, right? So it's not feeling so great at this point. But then we win another two in a row. First, it's finally beating Andy Dalton, which was so cathartic. It's like, my God, why couldn't why couldn't we beat him before? It took way too damn long, in my opinion. Then a total dismantling of the Atlanta Falcons, and suddenly we're over 500 for the first time this season. That felt really good. Remember that 9.4% chance they had to make the playoffs? Well, now it's a 52% chance. Then week eight. They had their annual stupid, dumb loss to the Browns. I don't know why we can't beat them. Oh boy, but I'll tell you, I think that loss to the Browns lit a fire in their asses, man, because the very next week they obliterated the Carolina Panthers. In fact, they proceeded to win every single game for the rest of the year, except for that Bills game that, you know, ended up getting canceled because of DeMar Hamlin's cardiac arrest. Luckily, DeMar recovered, though, and we raised millions of dollars for charity in the process, and that was, for me, a big highlight of the season. So, we all took a few days to process it, and then it was back to football the following week because he was okay. That's when the NFL decided they were going to put out this stupid postseason plan that essentially gave the Bengals a raw deal because they had to cancel the game against the Bills. A game where the Bengals were in the process of dominating, by the way, when tragedy struck. Without diving too deep into the logistics of the plan, it essentially gave the Bills and Chiefs a potential neutral site for the AFC Championship game between them, and mathematically eliminated the Bengals from the number one seed. It also, for some dumb reason, granted the Bengals an AFC North Championship with the stipulation that if the Ravens win in Week 18, home field advantage the following week would be determined by a coin flip. So that's a really, really, really oversimplified version of what the NFL decided to do. It'd probably take a whole video to break down all of the scenarios, and I just didn't have time to make that video at the time when it happened, and, and now it's just not really relevant. None of that happened anyway. 
So there's your basic overview of what happened. The Bengals said, fuck your coin flip to all of that, proceeding to take care of business in week 18 against the Ravens and beating them one more time for good measure in the wild card round. And by the way, side note, I don't want to hear any of this garbage about how the Ravens would have won that game with Lamar Jackson instead of Tyler Huntley. Why? I remember when I said they held Lamar to 174 passing yards and 58 rushing yards when they saw him earlier in the year. Lou Anarumo has got Lamar's number since coming to Cincinnati. So I think Tyler Huntley actually did a better job, and this is a bit of a hot take, but I think he actually did a better job than what Lamar would have done in that game. Ultimately, it came down to a question of can the Bengals' offense do enough against the Ravens' defense? And they absolutely did. So, get over it. The following week, they reminded everyone who was truly in control of that Bills game from Week 17, and they took them to town. They said, fuck your neutral site. And they announced to the world that they're on to Burrowhead Stadium. Wait, wait, wait shit, fuck, oh, cut the kid. Yeah, so as we know, good and well at this point, the Burrowhead thing didn't work out so well, right? I really didn't think it made that much of a difference to the actual outcome of the game because it was an extremely close AFC championship that the Bengals were actually within about two or three first downs of actually closing out with under a minute to go. But, oh boy, did we hear about the trash talk after we lost. And honestly, rightfully so, we'd let everybody else hear about the trash talk. That's the point. You know, we would have been just as insufferable if we had won that game. Kind of like how Chiefs fans were insufferable about the refs after losing the AFC Championship game last year. So, yeah, as much as I'm not personally trying to blame the refs about that loss, I have no, no sympathy for Chiefs fans having to hear all about the NFL being rigged and all that because y'all were just as bad last year. Look, losing after getting that close sucks, though. But I'll say it before, I'll say it again. After being a Bengals fan my whole life, and mostly just dealing with futility and being comic relief at best, I'll take competing at the highest level every year, even if we don't win at all. That said, we, we better win at some point. I don't know if my heart can take all this stress with no payoff. So let me know what you guys think about the season. Do you still think we're flukes? If so, I'd love to hear a real argument behind that rather than just mindless trolling, right? That said, if you want to mindlessly troll, like, feel free, you know, it's an open forum, and I'm just happy you watched the video in the first place. Like, I think some of y'all think you're hurting my feelings with the trolling, but you're helping me with the YouTube algorithm, so, like, bring it! Alternatively, were you, like me, encouraged with what you saw during the whole season? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll feature the best ones in my next video, like this one from Ken Hammock, who responded to my AFC Championship recap video by saying, We had a great run, and like you, I understand how far we came. Osai was playing his ass off, loads of potential as a pass rusher. Who day? So there's an example of comments that I'm hoping to see on this video. But as far as Osai is concerned, Ken, I fully agree. The more I think about it, the more I think he didn't even really fully affect the outcome of that game, Osai should hold his head up for being otherwise outstanding in that game and quite clearly having an extremely bright future in this league. But that's all I've got for this week, y'all. My next video is probably going to be a Super Bowl recap because, you know, unlike some of y'all, I'm going to watch because I'm still interested in football even though my team isn't in it. Then we're going to do probably a projected power rankings episode for next season. And after that, we're focusing on off-season content. I am so grateful to the Bengals for yet another amazing season and to you guys for yet another incredible year on this channel. But until then, y'all can always catch more of what I do at KylePhelps92 on Twitter, Facebook.com slash ThePhelps, Buttfumble Sports, The Battle of Ohio Podcast, which is on the Spot Pod Network, Podbean, and right here if you subscribe. The window is Joe Burrow's whole career, y'all. I'll leave y'all, as always, with a hootay!